Mobility webinar series. I'm joined by Dr. Amar Naife. We're going to be talking about photovoltaics and nanotechnology. Thank you, I'm glad, happy to be here. Let's start with nanotechnology. What is it? Nanotechnology, by definition, is the study of um, nature or materials that are physically below 10 to the minus 9th meters. So small stuff. Tiny, tiny, tiny stuff. Tiny, tiny stuff. And we can manipulate these materials, grow them, develop them at that tiny scale. Why? What makes it interesting is the properties of those materials actually change when they're shrunk down. Meaning, what we knew about the material beforehand is totally different. You scratch that, now we have a whole new material. That means we have a door to do a lot of new things. Can you give an example of something that changes so drastically like that? Yes, like silicon, for example. Okay. It doesn't emit light. When we shrink it down to the nanoscale, it actually glows colors, green, red. So it's really amazing technology, actually. And we can use that for our, for our advantages. I want to ask why it does that, but that's probably going to take way too long it to explain. It might go a little bit deep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for some quantum mechanics and, you know. Yeah, a little too complicated for today, I think. But the emitting light part, that sounds like it would be perfect for use in photovoltaics. It is, it is. It's perfect for use in, in many applications. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, why we want to look at nano for photovoltaics is um, nowadays the kind of holy grail um, in solar cells is to keep increasing the performance. Right? Mm -hmm. without re increasing the cost, right? Because cost is important, right? When we talk about energy and of all course. that. So if we can find new ways to improve the solar cells that we currently have and maybe discover the, the greatest new material, right? That can uh, maybe make solar cells even more efficient. That's another holy grail. So there's a lot of, still a lot of research in using nanotechnology to improve the performance of solar cells. And we can manipulate how the sunlight hits the solar mm. cell based on these tiny nanomaterials. That's what I was going to ask. What do you mean by improve the performance? Like what areas are you looking at in a standard solar cell that you could improve with nanotech? Yes, so for example, in um, thin film solar cells, the material is small. Okay. So we don't have that much material to absorb light. But they're useful because they're cheap and you know we can use them as, because the future might be flexible solar cells. You can stick them to your sh your clothes. You know, you can make them more you know compatible in remote areas. You can just fold them out. But in order for that to happen, we need more light to get through. So what we do is we put a coating or a layer of these nanomaterials on top of the cells, mm -hmm. that when the photon hits the the nanomaterial, it can either be absorbed by that nanomaterial and then re-emit at another wavelength. So we get kind of a bonus. Okay. Or it can deflect and create more reflections so more light can get through. So kind of in both ways, we can get more light for the more performance for the same light. So we're kind of improving it simply. And imagine you can just simply take your solar cell that you fabricated and then simply spray on these nanomaterials. It's not a complicated procedure. You just spray them on, improve your performance. So there's a lot of interesting applications. And you know the motivation for solar we know with all the problems with global warming and climate change, it's a very important topic as I don't think that's controversial anymore. I mean, we're, we're seeing it now, uh, you know, with all the negative effects of climate change. So finding new solutions for solar. And a lot of governments are pushing now for renewable and solar. And so we want to be at the forefront in that here at Khalifa University. What are some of the projects that we're working on here? Yes, so luckily here we have facilities that we can do this research. Do you need complicated facilities? If it's so easy as spraying it on, do you need something? We need some facilities to fabricate these solar okay. cells. So we have a unique lab in, in the Mazdar campus uh, that has a clean room facility where we can fabricate um, solar cells at the nanoscale without worrying about contamination. Mm. So that lab is not to protect me, it's to protect the lab itself. So okay. it's a clean room, you wear this bunny suit, and you go in, the first time I saw it, I thought it's protecting me, right? But it, I'm actually protecting the environment around me. So it's been an interesting lab. And using that lab, we've been able to do a lot of research here and publish high quality papers, uh, have patents, graduate students using this facility. And some projects that we do nowadays is looking at new materials. Uh, there's a new um, family of materials called 2D materials, like graphene and yeah. others that can be used in solar applications. We've shown solar cells uh, with high efficiency with graphene, low cost, 
and they can even be made flexible to be more useful in other applications. So, and now we're currently looking at very high efficiency solar cells to compete with you know, some of the top universities in the world mm -hmm. uh, with silicon and making it low cost also. So there's a lot of interesting research going on and we have you know, all the facilities we need and all the support we need to do it here. So you clearly think that solar is the future for solving all of our energy problems that we've got right now. And mm -hmm. are you focusing more on the flexibility side of things or are there other projects that you so, think could really benefit? Just one point about that, I mean obviously there's other solutions to, mm. for clean energy, but solar is one of them. But I, I do believe solar will be the key one, at least in my opinion. Uh, in my research we kind of do both. So we're looking at both the kind of low cost, flexible applications and the more high efficient, low cost applications. Because those applications are used you know, for rooftop or other mm -hmm. kind of solar. The flexible stuff can be used in more remote areas or more you know, fabric or you know, stick them on yourself or kind of futuristic stuff. Imagine your electric car, you can charge it with solar, right, in the future. That'll be convenient, right? So yeah. but there's a lot of things like that we're looking at in general. Um, and I hope, you know, I always tell my students, I wish I had a time machine, I can go in the future and see have we solved, you know, the, are we completely green, are, are we completely now reliant on, you know, clean energy. So that's, for me, it's kind of a passion and, and I'm excited that I can do that research here and do, you know, contribute, you know, to that field of research. Dr. Amma, thank you very much. Happy to be here.